Hey guys, we're going to clean this 7-3 uh, block of mine. I got a bunch of brushes from Summit a long time ago. They've done five or six blocks. Uh, what we're going to do is scrub it down. It just came back from the machine shop. We're going to scrub it down with uh, just a bunch of brushes. It's got bore brushes. This thing went through the hot tank, so it's pretty clean, but old old habits die hard. So we're going to scrub it down, get it ready to go together. Got some hot water with some uh, Dawn dishwashing soap. Soap it up first. I'm sure this is something a lot of folks have done before, but I've never seen it documented on a 7-3 build, so we'll... We'll go through the whole thing. We're going to assemble this block. This is just a raw block. It's been bored 20 over. I um, picked this uh, truck up back in August of 18. And uh, it had been a bunch of pretty bad overheats and uh, cracked the cylinder heads actually bad enough inside the valve pockets. I, uh, I posted those on powerstoke.org asking for opinions on were these cylinder heads any good or not and everybody agreed with me that no. So I got a new set, used set out of Biloxi, part seller down there. 100 bucks a piece, pretty good price. Then spent, oh, I don't know, I kind of lost track. All in all, we've got about 13K in parts for this engine. The object here is we're building a engine capable of pulling heavy loads. Uh, thinking about getting into some hot shot trucking and I think a 7.3 would be probably a very good platform to work from simply because it's it's a pretty strong platform I mean we are gonna we're gonna go ahead and give it a little more power this is actually the main oil gallon um, all the way to the back Anyways, back to the little discussion about hot shotting. It seems that I see a lot of guys um, driving new trucks and lease trucks, and it's all good, but it's a lot of a lot of money. You know, twenty uh, enterprise lease is what twenty two cents a mile. It's uh, Pretty expensive when you get down to it. At least I think it is. Out. Back in the day, in the early 90s, I uh, I did deep cycle refrigeration for a living, and I used to drive about 110, 112,000 miles a year, which is Pretty much what truck driving is, if not a little. 
a little more. So that, and then I had to, when I got on site, I used to have to do my work, plus all the driving. So it, it, uh, It was an interesting job, but I did get out of it simply because I got tired of working on the inside of the building. I wanted to work on top of the roof. What we're cleaning right now is the oil jet coolers for each pist piston coolers. I'm sorry. They tap right into the galley, which we all have to clean. This is just typical. You do this with any engine block. I built a few racers in my time and had fun out on the strip, uh, pretty close to Memphis Motorsports Park. We used to run out there once in a while, just for fun. I have a 61 Falcon sitting there ready to, uh, ready to go. PMR. It was a PMR rod, rod engine originally, and uh, rated horsepower is 275. Okay, but man, it's gonna work hard pulling the kind of loads a hot shot will pull. So we're gonna beef it up a bit. Uh, we'll go through that as we progress through the build. And it's going to be a, a fun job. We'll, we'll have a good time. This is a heavy engine. It's, you know, power stroke. The 7.3 is about 100 pounds fully built. If you get one of these engine fans, be sure to grease it when you're using it. Otherwise, you can't turn it. Just put a layer of grease on the Pivot point and then you're good. First up in this one, just soapy water. Hot soapy water. Long just water. And as hot a water as you can have. Venus was a place in Brighton, Tennessee called High Performance Engine. And Richard that owns it and runs it. That man is an artist, I'll tell you. I would recommend him to anybody for any kind of build. He's done lots and lots of power strokes. Lots of seven threes, lots of six oh. And uh, he's got a full shot. He's done all of my machine work. Really nice guy too. Most guys in this business are. Stuff to walk. 
Panther. Right. I know. Clean it from the other end. Hey, why not? Seven three is pretty straightforward, isn't it? I mean, it's not real complicated. Our build's not complicated. Decided to go with a about a 450 to 480 horsepower engine. Or after the torque anyway, not the power. We go turn the water on, we'll rinse this thing out. Okay, got some water. Not much, but got water. systems as we put them together. First is going to be the piston wires and then we'll put in the uh, crankshaft. Crankshaft did not need turns. And this engine had 270 on it. 270,000, so not a lot of miles. But, man. The impressive thing is I picked it up in Kentucky. I live in Tennessee, and it made it the entire trip on, I'd say, six and a half cylinders, and uh, got 16 miles a gallon. So, <laughs> that's impressive, to say the least. But I could not get complete contribution out of them, out of all the cylinders. Uh, I run Auto with Ingenuity, which is actually really great software. And I uh, could never get the contribution on 7 and 8. The two back cylinders just would not, you know, mess with them. Um, under harness wiring, under under uh, valve cover wiring, um, put new glow plugs in it. Had six bad glow plugs. It was a bear to start. Um, we got to run it. It wasn't too bad. Had a definite low in it, which means we were down a cylinder or bad compression or something. So when we got it home. Like I said, we hooked it up to auto engine, it was get the contribution right. Messed around with um, injectors, fuel pressure, uh, oil flow through the pump. It all seemed like it wasn't great, but wasn't um, bad enough to warrant. You know, that's the problem to nail it down. So I did a compression test. And that revealed everything. I had 320 on all the cylinders, except 7 and 8. Uh, 7 and 8 had. I think 7 had. Uh, I've got it written down. I think 7 had. 220. Eight was our problem child. Down around 180, 190. That's wet too, so static was just horrible. 
So out she came. I'll get oh, about 95% back. Lost a bunch of weight, too. This is well. cleaning this all. Told me he was ready to put it together, so we started putting it together. Got to firing it up. Got to, um, and uh, started over pressurizing the radiator. Thought we had a bad head gasket. So after tooling around a little bit, I let it cool down and pop the radiator cap. No, just like the on dishwasher stuff. I said, I said, brother, did you, uh, you wash the engine, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you rinse it? You mean I'm supposed to rinse it? Well, we, uh, ran the hose in that engine for, <coughs> put one of those pressed down power flush kits on it. And ran water through it for about, oh gosh, a couple hours. Finally got all the soap out of it. And it ran fine after that. Kind of funny though. So if you wash your block with soap and water, be sure to uh, rinse it good. <laughs> Otherwise you'll have suds mix. Good. Give us the paper towel test, see what we got. It didn't have any grit on it anyway. But uh, just want to be sure.
Boards were spotless, shiny, brand new iron when we started. Look how much they rust up just from cleaning. It's all surface rust, come right off, but it's just amazing. So, let me get some uh, oil and we'll oil them down. I like to use white paper towels because I can see what I'm pulling off of it. So, WD 40. Don't care about rust, just care about dirt. No dirt, just rust. Good. And now it looks real pretty. Do not be scared of to use too much. I don't think you can. If you've never heard of transverse myelitis, it's an interesting condition. The uh, what happens is the nerve, whatever nerve it settles on, actually starts to delaminate, lose connectivity, and you know you can completely lose the use of whatever happens to be effective. Um, the way it happened to me was I had, everybody had chicken pox when they were kids, you know. And I had a case of uh, shingles, which is just adult chicken pox. A little fever, you know, no big deal. They said it was going to hurt like crazy, and it didn't hurt. Not that big a deal. But, one year back in 90, no, excuse me, 2010. I uh, stood up, you know, alarm went up, stood up to get out of bed, and fell. And uh, my entire, oh, that's on that one. I think that's the end. Got, um, 
Anyways, I fell the other board. And uh, so I stood back up, fell again. I stood back up, did this 30 minutes. You know. Bad thing was I couldn't feel my whole right side. I thought, no, shit, I've had a stroke. I was only 45 at the time. And, uh, excuse me, 49. And, uh, it was eye opening to say the, say the least. Um, so I went to the doctor and they couldn't figure it out. Went to a bunch of damn doctors. They did CAT scans and CAT scans to die and MRIs. And one doctor, real piece of work, had a MRI with, what they call it, MRI with enhancement on Friday. And he tells me, eh, it doesn't look too good. It could be MS. Have a good weekend. I said, thanks for the news, but you're not sure? No, nah, we're not sure. We'll have to look at it. But it looks like it could be MS. You got a spot on your brain. Could just be a shadow. I said, okay, fine. That's a nice guy. Give people like that news on a Friday that they're not even sure. I thought, what a, what a winner this dude is. Bedside manner of non-existent. So anyway, it wasn't. He did another one. It was shadow. And it, what it comes down to is they really couldn't tell what the hell was wrong with my back. I thought all the work I had done in refrigeration and injuries from that, and just working hard all my life, I thought, well, oh, shoot, I got a blown disc or something, and go ahead and get it fixed and get it done. No, nope, no such So, I went to another series of doctors and didn't get actually diagnosed until it's 2020, 2018. And in the meantime, I'm almost in a wheelchair. And completely changed my life. So I finally went to a neurologist. He said, yeah, it's transverse myelitis. I said, what in the world is that? He said, it's a term we use for um, the delamination of them. He explained it all. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. Now we're getting somewhere. How do we fix it? Oh, uh, we don't fix it. I said, what do you mean we don't fix it? He said, there's no fixing it. It's up to you and God. So, you know, being a Christian, I went ahead and said my prayers, and he signed me up to a physical therapist that you can get as much back as you can. Let's see how you do. <coughs> and I stumbled my way to the car. And then my wife drove me home and uh, decided to seek out a church member who was a physical therapist. And he told me, yeah, I've seen this before. Let's start some work. If you've never had a TENS machine, it's, it's pretty interesting. They actually shock the muscle and make it work. He did that for several weeks. And I was able to actually shuffle around. He finally put me in a brace. Everything was Cope said. He said, you're going to get back as much as you want. I said, well, I want it all back. He said, well, start working. And I had, I started working, and I, you know, take, blow it off. And, but uh, recently, I've been really hitting it hard, and it's coming back. It's, it's, a, it's truly amazing what you can do with your own body. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, we're going to build this truck, so... Let's take another look at it up there. It's getting dark in here. Sunset. Yeah, those boards look real pretty. Got a nice cross hatch. Yep. I think we're going to be golden on this one. Should 
making a heck of a motor when we're done. Should be able to do what we want. Okay, I'm gonna wheel this back in and we'll start the next series. Okay guys, let's do a little parts comparison here. This is original equipment. As you can see, it's not uh, focus. Okay. It's a decent part. They've been known to fail. What happens is this is a press fit. I think. I think it's a press fit. It might be a friction weld. Um, but they're known to break loose. And when they do, the first thing they do is usually punch a hole in the top of the piston. This is a piston oiler. It goes in the block like this and squirts oil up on the piston. This is part from Riff Raff. Riff Raff Diesel. Very nicely TIG welded. That'll never come out and it'll never leak. And they're relatively inexpensive. Like to $59 or something like that. It's cheap. That's just one failure that we're going to eliminate. One possible failure, I'm sorry. One of these was actually loose when I took it out. It's not now, but I, I can't make it work loose. But it was loose when I took it out because I twisted it. Um, reached down there to grab it and it twisted in my hand. So that was a uh, soon-to-be fail that we're going to avoid.
Let me show you the difference between a couple of bolts here. Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. Maybe. Okay. This one has been run through a die. This one still has the original thread lock on it that Ford used. They all have to be cleaned. So, we're cleaning these up. Just a thought. Okay guys, you gotta have um, the, the threads clear and the main galley's already clear. So we'll clean that. But we're gonna put some blue Loctite on. Because Ford put their version of Loctite on them. So this is pretty simple. I'll do a couple and then We'll stop the camera and I'll do the rest. No sense in watching all of them. It's kind of boring. Put a little blue Loctite on it. Like that. A little too much on that one. Now this is after you've chased all the threads. Put it in hand tight. And then the torque spec is 100 and, uh, it's 14 foot-pounds. So 12 foot-pounds is 144 inch-pounds, so we'll go there. We have to work around these when we get the uh, put the cam bearings in. That's what I was just looking at. Not a big deal. I suppose everybody's going to bust on me for using Harbor Freight torque wrenches and tools, but you know what? For the everyday mechanic. Or the shade tree mechanic. They get pretty darn close in there. They're accurate enough. 